everybody, it's Chris, and I'm back to do another pour with you. So this is kind of another one of those how-to things. Um, I love to pour on record albums, and they're really inexpensive to buy, and they're kind of a great thing if you're just starting out. They're really a great surface to practice on, because if you mess it up, you can totally just wash it off with water and do it again. So I really enjoy pouring on record albums. Um, you can do some fun stuff with them. You can make clocks from them. Um, this one I'm actually, let me show you one of the clocks that I've made. This is one of the clocks that I've made. This is happens to be, I believe, a Victrola record. It's a little bit smaller than the one that we're going to paint on today. But um, after I get done pouring them, I put the numbers on. I have a big shot and I just cut out the numbers out of metallic paper, glue those down, and then I put a coat of resin on it. And then it gets a clock kit. And this is the clock kit that gets on, gets um, installed onto the record once it's finished. The actual stem of the clock kit actually goes through the hole in the album. Um, this one you can see that I've actually plugged the hole because I wanted to use this kind of more as a piece of art rather than a clock. If this would be a clock, what I do is I just tape the back of it and then I go ahead and pour it and then I remove the tape off of the back. But today, what I want to do is kind of make a piece of art. So my thought was um, to pour the album, it will get coated in resin as well. And then I was thinking that it would be really cool to stencil a mandala on there or a mandala, I believe is how it's actually said. So this is a stencil that I ordered from Cutting Edge Stencils. I'm not sure how well you can see it. Hopefully if I kind of move it back and forth, you'll get an idea of it. It's called the Compassion Mandala Stencil. This one happens to be 10 inch and I bought it specifically to put on record albums. I thought it would be very cool as a clock. Um, but today I'm just gonna do kind of an art piece with it. So I have put a piece of tape on the back of it um, just to plug the hole. And then I use just some like plaster um, or some hole filler like you would use on a wall. And I just go ahead and fill the hole and then I lightly sand it to make sure it's smooth. I just have it sitting up on some Dixie cups just to keep it up out of the paint. And then today I have a nine ounce cup. I have spritzed that with my WD-40. And then before I poured, and well, actually, as I set this down here, I actually wiped it down with an alcohol wipe just to make sure that it was clean and there isn't any oils and stuff on it. So today we are going to do kind of a pink pour. Um, we're going to use deep magenta. I have a pearlescent house paint that I'm using. Um, all of my paints have been mixed with my pouring medium. And in the pearlescent house paint, I put a little bit of silicone and I use the treadmill, spot on treadmill belt lubricant. I buy that on Amazon and I probably put about four or five drops in the bottle. Generally, I do not use silicone and I generally do not mix it in my bottles of paint. Um, I kind of try to keep it out of my paint bottles just because then I know that my paint is just paint. If I choose to add silicone to it, I would probably just pour it into a cup and do it that way. But because it's house paint and I don't always get really great cell action out of house paint, I did put some of the silicone in the actual paint itself. And then we're also using medium magenta. And then we're also going to use my custom silver. And my custom silver is a combination of Liquitex Silver um, Basics paint, as well as the Rust-Oleum glitter paint. Um, the Rust-Oleum glitter paint kind of has a clear base to it so that when it goes on, it's pretty much all glitter and it dries clear. So I always mix the silver Liquitex Basics with it just so that I don't have voids in my pores. Otherwise, um, like for example, on this, it could dry clear and you would see the black album underneath. So I don't want to do that. So I've put the silver in there as well. Okay, so this is the deep magenta and I'm going to go ahead and pour this. Um, I'm going to layer my paints in. This is the house paint that is the light pink pearlescent and it has the silicone in it. This is my deep magenta. So I'm just gonna go ahead and layer my paints in here and continue to build up my layers and get enough paint to pour this. This is the custom silver. And then I'm gonna come back in with the deep magenta and I'm just gonna continue layering until I have probably about six ounces of paint, I would say, to do this album. Um, I would rather have a little bit 
of runoff and be able to dip other things into it than to not have enough paint to cover because then you're just struggling and fighting with it to try to get it to cover and that's no fun. This is supposed to be fun. It's not supposed to be stressful. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep on going here. Um, this piece will actually, once it's poured, I will let it sit for probably about a week or so, and then I will resin it. As I've said before, I resin quite quickly compared to other people. I know some people feel that you shouldn't resin until it's been at least a month. I personally haven't had issues by only waiting a week or two weeks, but that is what I do. I'm not telling you that's what you should do. I'm not telling you that you won't have issues if you do it that way. I'm just saying that's what I do, and that's what I prefer to do, so... Um, resin at your own risk, I guess is what we're saying. Okay, so I've got my paint layered. I'm just going to go ahead and flip the cup over on top of the album. Now, on this particular album, I did not kills the label. A lot of times I will kills the label on these older records because sometimes I find that the color will kind of bleed up through. Hopefully that's not the case today um, because I am using some pinks and um, tones of red. I'm hoping that the red will be okay. So, you can see that my paint has released from the cup because I used that WD-40 silicone. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull the cup. And you can see I have some really cool cells coming up already. And I'm kind of going to let that paint kind of do its thing and spread out across. I can see a lot of metallic and glitter, which is really cool. <clears throat> so my thought is, at this point, I would probably use silver to... Um, stencil the mandala on there, but I almost feel like the deep magenta might actually be quite pretty and just do a deeper pink on it. But this obviously will dry darker than what it's um, appearing right now. I do have paint in my cup still. I'm just kind of waiting to see if this is going to spread out enough. I think I probably have enough on there. So you can see that I've got little rings of paint. <clears throat> See how these little rings are forming? Um, that is primarily from the silicone, I would guess. Um, I generally don't get these little rings of cells, which is kind of cool. Um, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can kind of get this. I'm going to let this see if I can get it to kind of go over this way. The nice thing about the albums, if you buy the thinner ones, um, like the Victrola record that I showed you, that one is much thicker. It is not flexible. This one's actually flexible, which I find is kind of cool when I'm doing pouring on an album because I can actually take the edge of it and kind of help. I, I don't want to say bend because you, you obviously can't bend it, but you can kind of flex it a little bit to get the paint to kind of go over the edges, which is kind of cool. Now this one, um, sometimes I have taped the albums. This one I did not tape because once I resin it, I will probably end up just sanding the back of it to make it nice and smooth since it's just going to be an art piece. All right, so you can see that I've got some really cool cells in here. I'm gonna go ahead and torch this and get rid of my air bubbles. And I'm gonna kinda hold it up high so that I don't get any crazy stuff going on with my paint. And I will caution you when you are using a torch and you're pouring on an album, be very, very careful. It is very easy to get the album warm enough so that it will actually start to just, um, to, uh, what do I wanna say? Um, it will actually start to kind of deform and start to melt. So be very careful when you're using a torch. All right, so you can see that my paint's kind of running this way. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this up and let me show you kind of what it looks like. It's very cool. I kind of like that ribbon. And as I said, these paints will dry darker than what they are right now. Um, with a pouring medium in there, I'm just going to gently start tilting this over here to the right. With the pouring medium in there, it definitely lightens the shade of the paint. But then as it dries, it dries much darker. So it will definitely dry back to the color that it originally was. A lot of times I'll take my hand and just kind of create a dam over here for the paint just so that I can make sure that I'm not dumping too much off before I get the entire surface covered. And then I'm just going to kind of let, I let the weight of the paint kind of go back to the middle. And then I'm going to come back over here on this side and then just kind of work my way around. I'm just making sure that those edges are covered because you wanna make sure that the edge is covered because it's not very pretty if you've got black plastic showing. All right, 
And then we're just going to come down here and do this edge. And continue around until we have the whole thing covered. All right, and that has it covered now. There's some very pretty colors in here. I really like the colors. I set this down so you guys can see. And I think it will continue to change because of that silicone in there. But there's really some neat cells coming up. I love this um, deep magenta that's kind of popping up through here. And it looks like there might be a ribbon here. I hope that pops up too. Okay, so this is kind of a how-to pour on an album. So I've kind of given you the basic knowledge on how you would, how you would go about pouring on a record album. As I said, they're really inexpensive. You can go to Goodwill, um, Salvation Army, whatever little thrift store that you might have around. And you might even have albums in your little stash of things that you have hidden away in your house. Um, but it's a really great way to start and you can really do some fun things with it. Okay guys, so this is kind of a how to pour on a record album. As I said, these are super inexpensive and a great way for you to start pouring if this is a new art form for you. Um, you can do a lot of fun things with it. Um, I've done a lot of stuff on albums. I just find that they're really fun and easy to pour on. Um, and they're kind of a smaller canvas, if you will. So it's not as intimidating as a great big canvas is to some people. So as I said, if you have any questions, please let me know. If there's anything else that you would like to have me feature in the how-to series, I would love to hear from you. Um, I would be more than happy to show you something if you're kind of struggling or not quite sure how to start. Please just let me know and I'll do my very best to help you. Thank you so much for watching today and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.